Hello, I'm Brian Callahan. And I'm Gwen Callahan. We're the directors of the Portland Horror Film Festival and the HP Lovecraft Film Festival here in Portland, Oregon. Going into year two of the COVID-19 pandemic, no one knew what to expect when it came to movie sets, theatrical premieres, or film releases in general. But no one did a better job of bringing horror to our doorstep than independent filmmakers. That's right. Tonight we're going to talk about and give awards to some of the best independent horror films of the year. To kick things off, Portland Horror Film Festival normally takes place in June, but this year things were really up in the air with theaters just beginning to open around the country. By delaying our dates by just a little, we were able to coordinate with our venue to be the first festival in Portland to get back to showing independent films on the big screen. And while some of you were eager to get back into theater seats and embraced restrictions like vaccination requirements and masks, not everyone was. So we had our first ever hybrid film festival with theatrical showings and a streaming festival with additional streaming only content, which made Portland Horror Film Festival a nine day carnival of horrors. Now we have the best audience in the world and nothing highlights that more than the range of films that you put at the top of the list. The top rated audience films span all the genres of horror. Our first award is for our annual bumper contest. Each year we challenge filmmakers to create a festival bumper to lead us into our short films blocks. This year's winning entry served as an endorsement as well as a lead in to the festival. The winner is Frightful Fun by Tim Blau. This is Bill before the festival. This is Bill during the festival. The Abbey Normal Award is given to the film that revels in its weirdness while still delivering a potent punch of horror. Our contenders this year include the viscerally unsettling Peter the Penguin. The quirky cult musings of playing with spiders. And the ape mask discourse on happiness, solution for sadness but no film struck our weird bone as profoundly as the monster movie Mad Science Cryptozoology Podcast throwback of Josh Stifter's Greywood's Plot. You know, I could tell when we first met that we'd be getting real close. I... Speaking of bones... Every year we honor the one film that pokes at our humorous. Get it? We look for horror and humor inseparably entwined, with both chills and great comedic timing. And there were a lot of great candidates, including Logan Lee and the Rise of the Purple Dawn. Which... and numerous duo. But the film that kept us laughing... And shrieking... Was the vampiric pageant shocker, Miss Blueberry Beauty Pageant, directed by Sarah Kennedy. God, what are you holding? Put that down! <laughs> Everybody loves a great monster movie. And this year, our new Creature Feature Award celebrates that feeling of lying on the rug in front of the TV in your pajamas on Sunday morning. Your eyes peeled with horror and glee, waiting to catch a glimpse of the fantastic monster as the unsuspecting victims are chased inevitably to their doom. This award is for films that give us a real carnival of creatures with breathless action, glorious kills, and practical makeup monster effects. Now, over the years, we have seen some great ones, but 2021 was a monstrous mother load. Runners up include the vampiric action comedy Red Snow and the cosmic horror abomination thrill ride The Relic. However, the film that really satisfied the monster kid in us features an awesome grub daddy monster suit, a wriggly maggot baby, toothy apparitions, and plenty of sex, blood, and pyrotechnics. This year's Creature Feature Award goes to Pacific Northwest filmed urban legend shocker, The Stairs, directed by Peter Drago Tiemann. This doesn't feel right. None of this makes sense. Would you just, Josh, come down, please. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. I mean, we're like deep in the Cascades. What, like 50 miles from another human being? What do you think built these? Also new this year is our Devil's Discord Award for score and sound design. As seasoned horror fans, we aren't often surprised by jump scares, spooked by apparitions, or grossed out by blood and guts. The way to our heart of horror, it turns out, is not through our stomach, but our ears. An excellent sound design can make the difference between just an old house and a haunted house. Or the difference between a walk in the woods and a dread-filled journey in the moonlight. 
Sound has the ability to manipulate our emotions when we least realize it. And create a sense of the uncanny, even when the scene appears mundane. The Devil's Discord Award goes to the utterly frightening take on Henry James's classic ghost story. Cleverly using the sounds of a stage play, this feature puts you on stage with the actors, tells you that it is going to scare the bejesus out of you, and then proceeds to do so with minimal effects but the powerful use of sound. The winner is The Turn of the Screw by New Zealand director Alex Galvin. <laughs> Nearly all films, especially horror films, have visual effects and special makeup effects. Sometimes we like them to be seamless. Sometimes we like them to be startling. But mostly we want them to be integral to the storytelling. The Trump Loy Award for Special Effects recognizes the film that creates an essential harmony between the story, the effects, and the horror. A cogent discourse on beauty, agency, and power that could not exist without the incredible special makeup effects. The winner is Strip by Craig Ouellette. <laughs> Likewise, our Camera de Sang Award is not just given to a film that looks nice but rather to a film that uses its cinematography to create a mood and atmosphere that is just as important to the story as its script and performances. The award goes to a film that perfectly captured the dread-filled silhouettes of Twilight. And uses its photography to convey the menace of both the landscape and also the people around us. Based on the classic story by Alexei Tolstoy, the winner is U.S. premiere Ferdelac Blood by Santiago Calvete. The Mask Rouge Award celebrates best performance in a horror film. A great horror performance is about more than just screaming. You have to believe not just the terror, but the whole range of emotions that the characters experience. A poor performance at best can result in enjoyable camp, but more often than not it creates a film where you can engage or empathize with the characters. This year was a real treat with a number of outstanding performances, including the subtle and poignant performance of Ruth Ramos in Diablo, the nuanced gravitas of Camrys Johnson in Blue Bison, Hannah Oldenburg's effortless fusion of herself and her character in Morelle, and Jade Schuyler's moving portrayal of a mother facing increasing isolation and despair as her reality crumbles in Red River Road. The winner of this year's Mask Rouge Award is Denise Cisneros for Red Snow. Denise's performance incorporates perfect comedic timing and takes us on a journey from a quirky nerd lost in fantasy to terrified prey on the run to a savvy hero with just a hint of sadism. Her performance elevates this film from a run of the castle, vampire comedy, to one of our audience's favorite films of the year. Christmas is supposed to be about spending time with the people you care about. It's supposed to be about opening up presents and listening to Christmas music and eating and drinking too much. It is not, I repeat, not about killing fucking vampires! Each year, we ask an industry insider to be our bloody judge and choose the film that they feel embodies the spirit of independent horror. This year, we tap the legendary Kelly Maroney, star of Night of the Comet and Chopping Mall. Take it away, Kelly! Hello, I'm Kelly Maroney, and I have the honor of being your bloody judge this year for the Portland Horror Film Festival. This was an impossible task. Uh, the writing, the direction, the cinematography, the performances, the special effects. Uh, yeah, so uh, my guidance then became, well, you know, which film do you think best embodies the spirit of independent horror filmmaking? So I got structure, right? Well, I got sat down with all my notes and I quickly realized you all do. They all do. Being on the set with you what must have been incredible. I mean, just getting out there and for the joy of using your talents and your your skills and, and your love for no time and less money, just for the joy of it, is the essence of the spirit of independent filmmaking. We're taking a very familiar trope and making it fresh. 
The reveal of the evil was very well played and very well executed. Want to go camping? For blending horror, monsters, comedy, and social commentary without commenting on it. Poor Glenna. It's going to scare the crap out of the kids this year. I got a lot of new things planned. I got the little zombies. That's uh, nice. I got uh, so uh, many cool uh, things. Uh, I I'm going to go now, Frankie. <laughs> and for taking a classic premise and a very unlikely Avenger, and with very few words, making us feel the tension and the terror and the the grief and the rage of this character, and then the darkness. And now, for the horrifying story of a 17-year-old girl's rape, the community of women and supernatural power that give her strength, and a shocking, brutal ending, masterfully told. And my pick for this year, Diabla. <laughs> Thank you, filmmakers. I know that this is merely an introduction to the rest of your beautiful work, and I will watch your careers for the joy of watching you skyrocket as other people discover you too. We need you. And thank you, Portland Horror Film Festival, for providing this platform. We need you too. And thank you for letting me be a part of this awesome festival. And congratulations. One of our most important awards, the Horde Award, is chosen only by the votes of our festival audience. This year, that meant not just the folks sitting in the theater, but also those of you who streamed the show at home. We've collated the paper ballots, studied the electronic votes, and put it all together to produce six nominees for the audience choice. The top films, according to our audience, are... Tinder Tango by Cecilia Robles. Koreatown Ghost Story by Min Sun Park and Teddy Tenenbaum. The Relic by J.M. Logan. Red Snow by Sean Nichols Lynch. The Turn of the Screw by Alex Galvin. And Red River Road by Paul Schuyler. And the winner is... Koreatown Ghost Story, directed by Min Sun Park and Teddy Tenenbaum, starring Lyrica O'Connell and Margaret Cho. It's like my son Edward. Husbands are hard work. Smart girl. The Mandicular Award is for the film that we think does what horror does best. Shining a light on the human condition and teaching us something about ourselves, our culture, and our world using the language of cinematic fear. There were several films that delivered an important message in a cocoon of horror. Not just trying to scare us, but also bringing that horror home to lay open our fears of otherness. Our lack of agency, our responsibility to our blood. And that made us question if we are in fact the monsters in the monster movie. Runners up include Sundown Town by Milo Butler. Family History by Mark J. Parker. Diabla by Ashley George. And Poor Glenna by John Paul DeCicio. The winner is La Guapa Siempre by Monica Moore Suryaj. My name is Milagro. What? And now it's time for our top awards. The Gouldor is awarded to the best short film and to the best feature of the festival. These are films that bring together all the elements of a great horror film. Wonderful photography, solid sound design, great effects, thrills, chills, and a story that gets under your skin. The winner of the Gouldor short utilizes a highly stylized look and nostalgic texture to bring us back in time and into a dingy basement to reveal a horrific family secret. It's a rumination on the horrible things we'll do to ensure the survival of our loved ones. The winner is Poor Glenna by Jean-Paul de Sissio. Alex? 
I brought the monster game. While so many studios were struggling with how to get through the COVID crisis safely, even going so far as to halt productions entirely, or postpone movie openings until theaters could be open, independent filmmakers were doing what they've always done. They made movies with big ideas and a singular purity of spirit, with only their homes as sets and their friends and family as cast and crew. Independent filmmakers are masters of making do with what they have, and none of the films we showcased in 2021 were slowed down by making them with limited resources or under quarantine. All of the features that we showed this year deserve awards as the very best independent horror. What the hell was that? Are you all right, miss? I'm very excited about this whole chupacabra situation. If I can hang on to anything as an artist, it would be to be fearless. <laughs> but one stood out to us with its high concept and thoughtful and moving storytelling. It is evocative of the works of Philip K. Dick and Richard Matheson, and it takes us to the edge of what we perceive as reality. All of our fears in the sage of COVID coalesce in this film. Loneliness, loss, despair, isolation, and the inability to know what's real. It puts us and the characters on the edge of their world as they disappear from view one by one, leaving us alone and frightened in an uncaring universe. The Gulda Orr feature of 2021 is a triumphant independent film. Made by one family. And their dog. Under quarantine. The winner is Red River Road by Paul Schuyler. Hello. Yes, we are here. This is the Witten family. MA63964. This is Anna Witten. Identification AW39471. We're, the others are here. Please, please wait. Sean! Sean is the call! Sean! Oh my! What? Sean Witten, identification SW39473. Where's... Where's Mark? Why are you hanging up? I need to get your brother and your father. We don't have enough food. Hello? Hello? It's just us, Mom. Why did you hang up the phone? They're here in this house somewhere. They are somewhere here. Mom, you're scaring me. Did you do this? What? Just, just tell me what's going on. Once again, congratulations to all the award winners. We would like to thank the staff and volunteers of the Hollywood Theater for working with us to make our 2021 event happen in the first place and to make it a safe and comfortable experience for everyone. A big thanks to the filmmakers who shared their art and message with us and those who attended in person or joined us in live streaming Q&As. Thanks to our volunteers whose help putting on the festival is essential. To our amazing audience for continuing to support independent horror. And to our patrons of horror, your support helps keep the festival running. And we hope to see all of you at the next event. If you'd like more details about Portland Horror Film Festival or are interested in attending in person or streaming from home in 2022, check out PortlandHorror.com, where you can also sign up for periodic announcements. And if you're a filmmaker with a current horror project you'd like us to consider for the upcoming festival in June, submissions are open now at FilmFreeway.com slash Portland Horror Film Festival. Thanks and have a great night. <laughs>